Well, good morning and welcome to Blair First United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Gina Guile, and we are so glad you have joined us today on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Thanks to Jane Van Horn for filling in for me last Sunday, and thanks for uh, highlighting the ministry of Camp Fontenelle. Don't forget to sign up those children and youth for summer camp. You can find all of that information on their website. Our beautiful flowers this morning are from Kevin and Susan Poling in honor of Susan's 60th birthday. Hope you have a blessed day, Susan. Also, just a few announcements. Our May newsletter will be coming out tomorrow. Please check it out for uh, upcoming information for May, June, a little bit of July. Uh, For instance, on May 9th at 10.30 a.m. at the outdoor worship service, we're going to be honoring our 2021 seniors, graduating seniors. They'll receive their prayer shawls that day. We'll also be offering coffee fellowship that day as well. No need to sign up for the worship service. Just bring a lawn chair and yourself, and we'll gather out here on the south lawn of the church. Also, we do have listening devices if you wish to stay in your car uh, and be a part of the church service that, day, that way. Finally, as always, just a reminder to send in those tithes and offerings. Your faithful commitment has helped us all through this year, helped us to continue our mission and our ministries. You can send those in via the church office, or you might consider signing up for Vanco. Vanco is our online option, which is an easy and convenient method of direct withdrawal, similar to how you pay a bill online. We'd be happy to help you sign up for that as well. Again, thank you for joining us this day. May you be deeply enriched and blessed by this worship service as God surrounds you in this space and your sacred space. In singing our opening hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought, page number 128, verses 1, 3, and 4. During our worship service today, uh, this year's confirmation class uh, will be sharing about their faith. First up is our confirmand, Tyler Bank. Good morning. 
My name is Tyler Bank. I would like to share my faith. I would like to begin with my favorite Bible story, David and the Goliath. In this story, a guy named David is fighting a huge Goliath. It turns out David ends up defeating the Goliath with a slingshot. This story is important to me because it shows no matter your appearance or the situation you're in, God is always there helping you along the way. During Lent, we helped with worship service and served the community, such as hide Easter eggs for the kids in Camp Fontenelle or rake leaves in people's yards. My favorite thing about our church is you can speak about anything and many people will support you. Also, I have friends here. A time when I felt God's presence was in football. It was the last game of the season. We hadn't won any games. And I remember praying to God, just let us win this one game. It turned out that we won. It was my best performance of the season. My faith is important to me because it gives me something to always work on and a way to get closer to God. Finally, confirmation is important to me because it lets me take control of my own faith when I really start my life. Thank you so much, Tyler, uh, for sharing about your faith. Well, if the children want to gather around for our children's message, please do so. Let me take this off. So do you like to color? Do you like to color? Me too. And have you ever gone back? You're so old now, right? Have you ever gone back and looked at a picture that you may have colored or drawn when you were much younger? For instance... You know, like when we were first starting out, our pictures maybe kind of look like that. Actually, my pictures still look like this, <laughs> stick figures. But you can tell it's a house, right? Maybe this might be the person who drew it. A little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney, some flowers. I think that's a great picture, right? But then you start getting a little older, and you get a little more skilled with that pencil or that crayon and then I don't know it might kind of start looking like that right you see you got a house for sure put some steps in the door the people have some clothes on right here right very good details the sun how about that and then some sky right there I like that picture too kind of cool looking the flowers right so getting a little bit better and then maybe it's a, even a little more, no, don't necessarily have people, but you get a little more creative, make the sun, the flowers, even that one's great, isn't it? I kind of like the details there, the flowers, beautiful flowers. I don't know, and then you kind of start getting better and better. Can you draw like that? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? A lot of details there. A little more definition. The trees, the sun, the clouds, the fence. Even better. So just growing and growing and getting better. And then, oh my goodness, how about this one? <gasps> Look at that tree. You see the branches. Can you do that? Can you draw like that? Make the definition of those branch branches. And then you got a little bit of shadowing going on there. Doesn't that look really cool? And then a waterfall. Look at that. Isn't that a cool picture? Have you drawn something like that? Then you get a little bit better. And then the people. Look at the people in that picture. A little more definition. Definitely got clothes on in that one, right? And then you can kind of see their faces. Got their skin coloring a little bit there. Look at the rainbow house. I love that rainbow house. <laughs> and then look at the sun. Look at the definition in that sun. Isn't that wonderful? And then I don't know, someday you might actually become a cartoonist and maybe it'll look a lot like that. I have a friend in my life that's a cartoonist. This isn't her work, but she does stuff kind of like this. But look at the definition of that, right? So there's all those pictures. Well, as you get older, you get better and better. Coloring, drawing, and I bet some of you are already great artists. You've grown into that skill with those crayons and that pencil, maybe even paint, right? And it, it, it's kind of that way with your faith. Our confirmands are sharing about their faith today and how they've grown in it. 
they were once young, just like you. And, well, they started out maybe listening to the Bible stories. Then they began to read the Bible stories. Are you reading yet? Then acting them out, maybe in a skit for Vacation Bible School, right? They kept on growing and growing in their faith and learning more and more. But, you know, even after they're confirmed in the faith, they'll continue to grow. We're always growing in our faith, even when we're older. And this is our verse today. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, and in faith. Just, our, just like the confirmands, right? You can set the example even though you're young, you can still set the example of how to live out your faith and how to follow Jesus. And one day, soon and very soon, you'll go through the confirmation process and you'll learn lots more about your faith and how to grow in it. And really, again, no matter how old you are, you're always growing. Do you know even a pastor? I learn new stuff all the time about my faith, especially this year, right? So I have assignment for you, an assignment, some homework. Oh no, homework. Can you draw a picture for me? Will you draw a picture for me? I would love for you to draw a church, a church, right? Any, any way you want to draw it, and then draw you and your family standing by it, kind of like this. Don't laugh. I did draw. This is as good as it gets for me. <laughs> and I'm almost 60. <laughs> so this is a church. And then inside my church, I have all the people, all different shapes and sizes. I've got stained glass windows. Would you draw a picture of a church and maybe, maybe put your family or you could even put your church family in it or some things about the church that you like. So and then some point, have mom and dad. Maybe put it away, and then someday, when you're confirmed in the church, maybe have them bring it back out and show everybody how much you've grown in your faith since then. Never stop growing. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear God, thank you for the opportunity to always be growing in our faith. Help us always to set the example by following your ways. Amen. Have a great week. Please join me in singing hymn 191, Jesus Loves Me, verse 3. Amen. I would like to whoops, I would like to invite Dean Udy forward at this time. Hello, my name is Dean Udy. I am the grandson of Ros and Susan Udy. I have been with this church my whole life, ever since I was a baby. My grandparents have taken me most Sundays and some Wednesdays, and of course other days as necessary. This church is like a second home to me. Everyone is so nice and welcoming. One time, when I was about three or four, I remember coming to the church and waiting for the children's message. When that time came, I was the only one to go up front with Pastor Denny. Maybe it's because of this or his white robes, but I thought he was Jesus. One time when my faith was being tested is when I had been forced to move to Omaha after kindergarten at Deerfield. I felt lonely without the people at the church, but I knew God had something special for me. And I, preser and I preserved and had spent the last four years in Blair. My, so my favorite song is This Little Light of Mine because it kind of shows my past and how, and how my faith had been tested and I 
now came back stronger. Thank you, Dean. Well, our scripture reading today is the 23rd Psalm. I'm sure it's a familiar psalm for many of you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving God, we do give thanks. We give thanks for the shepherd that you do lead and guide us, you comfort us. Lord, I pray this day these words that I've meditated upon, that I've prayed upon, that I've pondered upon. Lord, I pray you bless these, my words. And Lord, may they penetrate hearts and minds and spirits. Lord, may they fill those hearts, minds, and spirits. Lord, with your love, may we go out and share it with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, throughout my life, during difficult times, I have found the book of Psalms to be a great help. And I found it especially true, true of the 23rd Psalm, especially in this time of pandemic. It's a comforting passage, isn't it? For, for people of all faiths, really, not only have we heard it well, it's comforting words read at a funeral, but I would also imagine it's one of those passages many of us memorized in Sunday school when we were children. Many of us surely remember, too, gazing upon this painting or the picture of Jesus. You know that picture, Jesus the shepherd carrying the lost sheep over his shoulders back to the fold. Songs have been written, stories told, and movies produced to bring its beautiful, peaceful, and reassuring images to life. Well, for us moderns uh, who have probably never tended a flock of sheep. I also find comfort in these words because I know, because I know they've been prayed and sung and repeated in hard times throughout the centuries. These are well worn words. These are words that have stood the test of time. These are words and images and promises that we can lean on, that can lead us through, that can bring restoration in the most difficult of times. So who has the shepherd, the Lord, been to you in these difficult times of a global pandemic? The Lord is our shepherd have you felt the shepherd watching over you, the Lord guiding you, the Lord walking with you, sometimes throwing you over his shoulders and carrying you back to the flock? Sometimes we go willingly, sometimes not so much. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The second line of this well-worn psalm reminds us that, well, God provides. God provides, yes, and, and that one of the main ways that happens is we provide for one another as we are God's hands and feet in the world. Jesus shows us that example, shows us that example so we won't want. For we hear in the gospel stories about the hungry crowds and the five loaves and the two small fish, the little boy brought to Jesus, just one of many stories and in all of those stories Jesus blesses the food gives them to the disciple gives that food to the disciples to distribute I shall not want the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want the Lord leads me through green pastures the Lord leads me beside still water those latter two lines tell us these are basic 
necessities of a sheep's life. Uh, to a sheep, green pasture is food, right? And the sheep needs to safely and easily drink the water. No predators present. Well, like the sheep, God leads us, the flock, to those basics. Green pastures, the food we need. Still waters, the calming and refreshing drink we need. These two may remind you, too, of of another pairing that we share when we gather around the table to be fed as a church. The bread and the cup, the shared sacrament of communion. God leads us. God feeds us. And now of late, I've been, well, I've been focusing on, for some reason, the last few weeks, focusing on the next line of this 23rd Psalm, the Lord restores my soul, restoration, restoration. Our church council has been meeting throughout this pandemic and making decisions, sometimes tough decisions, regarding the stage of the restoration process for the church. As always, we we take great care in deciding what's next for our congregation as we roll out of this pandemic. So after I got home from last week's church council meeting, uh, the, the discussion from the meeting, the discussions from that meeting really got me thinking. Not that I haven't been thinking about the decisions made these past few months, but I began to really think and ponder and dream I began to dream, what will the church look like in this next phase of the process of restoration? As we slowly get back to normal, if there is such a thing, what will normal things look like in the church, for our church? Well, our 23rd Psalm assures us the Lord restores our soul, so I begin to ponder, are, are we ready Are we ready for the next phase of the restoration process? And not in the sense, are are we ready to gather in the sanctuary, offer Sunday school, enjoy coffee fellowship on a Sunday morning? I know we're ready for that. But are we ready? Are we ready for the rest of it? All the rest of it. Because all of those things require Help and full participation. As we know, in-person worship services, services not only require participants, but those require ushers and scripture readers, greeters. Every week, are, are we ready? Are we ready to participate and serve? Sunday school classes, I can't wait for those on a Sunday morning. They, and they, they not only require participants, classrooms full of adults and youth and children, but they require teachers and helpers. Every week, are, are we ready? Are we ready to participate and serve? Oh, and coffee fellowship. Uh, I so enjoyed our time together outdoors with cinnamon rolls and coffee. Oh, and someday we'll be back in Fellowship Hall. But you know, coffee fellowship not only requires an appetite, but it requires set up, serving, clean up every week. Are, are we ready? Are we ready to participate and serve? And then, yes, we have a whole host of ministries, book clubs, Bible studies, congregational care, missions, church events, and activities. And all of those not only require participants, but it requires leaders, leaders and organizers. Are, are we ready? Are we ready to lead and organize and serve? Are we ready for all the rest of it. And you know, our online worship services, oh, those have added an, an interesting dynamic to our church. Online services were nothing new before the pandemic. They were just new to us. Our online services have provided and will continue to provide people an opportunity to, to worship for, with us wherever they are and whenever they are. That's exciting. That's exciting to me. Online worship services can benefit a church greatly. Because as we know, our world, well, our world, it's a 24-7 kind of world. Life happens beyond our doors on Sunday morning. 
how shall we utilize that online worship service in this process of restoration? You know, our confirmands are sharing about their faith today. And, you know, I always think about them and all of us really as works in process. Have you ever referred to yourself as a work in process? Never fully completed. Well, in June, at their confirmation service, they'll agree to faithfully participate in the church's mission and ministries by their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness, which is what they're doing today. The congregation, that's you, you agree to walk and journey alongside them and do the same by reaffirming your own faith. Are we ready? Are we ready? And you know, like the 23rd Psalm, those vows are well-worn words. Do you remember reciting them? Those well-worn words have been recited for decades. And, and I think they'll be, well, poignant words more than ever this year. Because we are ever mindful of how many things have changed. Not only out in the world, but they've changed for our church as well. Yet, many things have remained the same. So here's my hope for the confirmands and really for all of us. As we continue to be works and process and continue in that restoration process in these trying times, my hope is that Sabbath, Sabbath will continue to be important to you. Not only as a day of rest in those green pastures and still waters, but as a day of worship as well as you dwell in the house of the Lord, whether it be online or in person. However you have and will gather with us, we thank you for being a part of our mission and ministries this whole year and as you continue to do so. But we know for all of us, we need connection with the shepherd and we need connection with one another. We need one another's prayers and presence, gifts, service, and witness. Do you know each and every one of us, each and every one of us is important to this restoration process. Amen. At this time, I'd like to move into a time of prayer and offering. I want to remind everyone again, if you're able, please send in those offerings and tithes. We do. We need you. Your faithful stewardship and sacrifice has helped us weather these past few months. Thank you. Thank you for your support and your stewardship. Let us now pause. Pause in a moment of silence, and I will begin us in prayer. Oh, blessed are you, almighty God. You are the author of life and the Savior of our souls, the shepherd, the shepherd in our lives. As we continue in this Easter season, we thank you for the power that raises Jesus Christ from the dead, and through him we trust you to overcome every power that threatens to hurt or destroy. Receive our thanks and praise this day through Christ our risen Lord. We pause now and pray for those near and dear to us. We pray this day for all of those who have been on the road to healing. We pray for Kareen Ryan, who is now home. We pray for David Harkey, who is now back in his home. We pray for Doc Bagby, who is back at Kroll Home. We pray continued healing prayers over all of them. We pray for Bill and Helen Booten's nephew, Daniel, who lives in Colorado. He continues to decline in health in his battle with cancer. Oh, Lord, we pray for a gracious transition from this life to the next. We pray for Francine Schultz, who continues to struggle with chronic headaches and struggles with osteoporosis. Lord, we pray for gracious strength and healing. O oh, Jesus, our shepherd, we have been journeying through a valley, through a valley of a pandemic, but, O oh Lord, we know it's not forever. 
We will come through this changed individually and collectively. So may we let ourselves be changed by goodness, pursued by mercy. May we be carriers of goodness, the givers of mercy. May we be filled and fed by goodness, held and comforted in the warm embrace of God's mercy. Through this time and for all of our days, let us join together saying the prayer that Jesus the shepherd taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in our doxology, Give Thanks. Gracious and loving God, we do give thanks. We give thanks for blessings, for abundance. Lord, we give thanks that you lead and guide us, oh, through the valleys and then through the hills and through the mountains. Lord, we give thanks always in the ups and the downs of life. You are a shepherd. It is all these things we give thanks. Amen. I'd like to invite Aubrey Brooke forward at this time to give her face share. My name is Aubrey Brooke, and I am 14 years old. I go to Opler Middle School and am in 8th grade. I've made a lot of friends at school, but also at church. I've been going to church since I can remember, and I've been going to our Methodist church for around 7 years. Church has helped me grow so much through service, youth group, and camp as well. I strengthen my faith and connection to God through service and nature. So I really liked camp. We were out in nature all the time, and I highly encourage going. I've made a lot of friends at camp and youth group, too. I've gone on mission trips and had service days with these friends, and I'm very excited to continue that. I've been looking forward to our upcoming service day at Camp Fontenelle, where we'll be helping out around camp. I've seen a couple of God sightings, and all of them have been in nature. One of the God sightings was in Branson, Missouri. We were at a nature park where there were lots of cliffs and rivers there. There was a big bridge that went over one of the rivers and cliffs, and you could look out of it, and it was so beautiful. It was a very wooded area, so you could see the sun peeking through the trees. You could see and hear the water running, crashing under you. The way that everything moved together, from the trees to the water to the birds and the squirrels, I just knew that it was a God sighting. Another one of the ways I experience God is through service. I do service through the church, the key club my mom runs, and little things like picking up trash on the sidewalk. My favorite mission trip was when we went to Wesley Woods and laid down a new mulch path and got to go swimming afterwards. Service trips with the Key Club aren't very common, but when they do happen, it's a very active event, such as helping out in open door missions or helping in hope centers. Church and service have caused me so many fun memories, and I'm looking forward to making even more. I'm always looking to strengthen my faith and service um, through my community and to never stop exploring. One of the worst things you can do to yourself is to stop exploring and stop learning because there will always be more to learn. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs> uh, thank you, Aubrey, and thank you to uh, Dean and Tyler. Thank you so much for being a witness today. Uh, witnessing goes way back centuries in the life of the church. Witnessing is how we share the gospel and the good news. Uh, sometimes it's just simply serving. Sometimes it's simply just walking alongside. But thank you to the confirmands for your witness today. So you, I pray, go forth, be a witness in all things, share the good news, serve. 
Just be who Christ has called you to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lamb of God in the Faith We Sing hymnal. Uh, verse 2113, we'll be singing verse 1, 2 in the refrain. Jesus.